All right, so in this video, I'm going to go over a little bit of color theory and color mixing um, because before you actually start adding color to your painting, you need to first figure out what all these colors are going to do once they start getting mixed together. So you want to kind of play around with that in your sketchbook or on another sheet of paper. So here's my palette of my eight colors that I would recommend. I have white, cadmium yellow, bright red, burnt sienna, raw umber, phthalo green, cobalt blue, and phthalo blue. All right, so those are ones that I recommend. So as you can see, I have the three primary colors, which are yellow, red, and blue. I don't need the secondary colors, which are green, orange, and violet. Uh, because I can make those with my primaries. I like to make them rather than actually get them out of the tube. That's what I prefer, and that's what we do here when you're actually in the classroom. So again, if you were in the classroom, you would be making something like this. It's like this big grid, and it's all the colors that we use. See how they're all up here at the top? They're all along the side. And what I have you guys do is mix these colors uh, to, again, figure out what they do when they start to mix. Um, so I'm not going to make you do this big grid because it does take a lot of time. Um, but I would strongly suggest to kind of follow along as I do some of the main colors, mixing them because you really want to know what's going to happen when you before you start your painting. All right, so I have my sketchbook here and I already kind of have some of what I kind of want to go through here written out. All right, so I get my paint brushes, I have my paper towel, I have a cup of water, and as you paint with acrylic paints, you're going to want to change out your water frequently because you don't want your water to get really muddy and dirty. Um, I think I said that in another video. So what are my three primary colors? So I'm going to have, you know, my yellow. Ah! And then I have my bright red. And then I have my cobalt blue. So all of my colors can come from these three primary colors. <clears throat> okay. So now let's make our secondary colors. And so I had to clean off my brushes just now. You can kind of hear them over here in the water. And then remember, whenever you're using your water for your acrylic paints, you always want to make sure you really dry off your brushes before you start painting with them because the water makes the paint thin out. Okay, so I can mix my colors right here on my sketchbook or I'm going to mix them over here on my plate actually. So let's mix, uh, let's make orange. So I'm going to mix yellow and red to make my orange. So all I'm going to do is off to the side, get a little bit of red, get a little bit of yellow, and try to get equal parts of each to try to get a nice orange. See how I just kind of dab just to get a little bit and then I make my orangey color. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. But we're just trying to kind of practice. All right, so there's orange. So now if I mix yellow with blue, and again, I had to clean my brush off, yellow with blue, I'm gonna get green. So I get a little bit of yellow. And I'm not gonna use the phthalo blue, I'm gonna use the cobalt blue. That's important. I just want a light green right now. And let's see how I'm mixing my colors. I'm not like making a huge mess on my plate. I'm keeping the colors really small. I'm just kind of trying to figure this out right now. I'm not like needing a lot of paint. I'm just like dabbing my paintbrush in my paint. And now let's make violet. So that's gonna be red and then back to cobalt blue. So here's my cobalt blue. Here's my little bit of red. 
kind of liked how that turned out there first. Kind of looks like a pinkish. There's my violet. Okay, so those are my secondary colors. So now, now I'm going to start mixing in phthalo green and bright red. So we don't have black paint because black paint makes um, the colors flat and um, we don't want things to be flat. It takes away the color. So we have to make a really dark value sometimes. So how to make our dark value, or if we want to call it black, there's a couple of options. There's more than a couple options, but these are the main two. Phthalo green and bright red, and then phthalo blue and bright red. So let's see what happens when we mix them together. So again, so I'm going to go to phthalo green, that's this green right here, and then bright red. Okay, so here's phthalo green, here's bright red. Now, is it going to be a super extreme black color? No. But it's going to be pretty close, and we don't need it to be perfect black. We just want it close because we're going to use that value or that color to help get other colors darker. That may be like a color that goes down first and then we have to build on top of it. Okay, so that's phthalo green and bright red. Clean my brush again. Make sure it's dry because I don't want a lot of water on my brush or it's going to kind of make my paints all runny. So next, let's do phthalo blue and bright red. So I come over here to phthalo blue. Get a little bit of bright red. Almost kind of makes it like a violety color. Just kind of depends how the parts of blue that you put in and the parts of red that you put in. So that makes a difference too. Um, if you try to get equal parts of both, you hopefully get a good mix. That one turns out a little bit more violet because you're mixing blue and red. And that's okay, it's a dark, it's a nice dark value. All right, so there's just a couple of options there. So let's do phthalo green and raw umber. This will probably be really dark. So here's phthalo green and here's my raw umber. Um, if you, or you could also use burnt umber. That was also a color you could do, um, but I have raw umber and phthalo green. So take my phthalo green, my raw umber, This is a good color combination because we, a lot of us, you know, we're all doing like these landscapes. So we're probably going to use a lot of greens and browns. Oh, there goes my brush. Just fabulous. So also with acrylic paint is sometimes after you put down the first layer, it doesn't seem to be um, very opaque. It seems to be transparent or see-through. So sometimes you have to let it dry a little bit and then come back over it, all right, with um, acrylic paint. So that's what happens when I mix phthalo green and raw umber. It's kind of like this nice dark green. Now let's do phthalo green and burnt sienna. And you should be pretty comfortable with burnt sienna by now because you had to use that for your, um, for your underpainting. So burnt sienna is kind of like a reddish brown tone. So let's see what happens when I mix phthalo green and burnt sienna together. It's almost, it's darker than the raw umber. At least what I'm getting. Isn't that interesting? It's a darker value. Probably because there's red in it. So see how it kind of is surprising. This is like a lighter green. This is a darker green. You would think it would be opposite. So see how you want to play around with these colors because you don't want to really go in blindly and do your, um, 
your landscape. All right, so now let's take phthalo blue and raw umber to see what happens when we, when we mix those together. So here's phthalo blue and raw umber. I'm just keeping my colors really small when I'm mixing them. It's kind of like this nice um, cloudy blue. It's really pretty. Yeah, it'll be something you need to use in your sky, depending on what your sky looks like. So now let's do phthalo blue and burnt sienna. So there's my burnt sienna, phthalo blue. See how again, look at how dark that is. It's a much darker value than that raw umber. It almost could be close to black if you get the mixture just right. So, so I'm just mixing like two colors, but obviously when we paint, you know, you may have to mix three, four colors together to get the value of your color. These are just some of the color combinations that you kind of want to practice and play around with to get um, the darker values. Obviously, like lighter values is going to be like when you incorporate um, white into all of this. So here's, you know, yellow and white. White can be pretty overpowering, though. You have to be really careful with it. It's a pretty strong color, actually. You wouldn't think it is, but it is. Right, red and white obviously are going to make pink. And again, how much white you put in, how much red you put in, it changes what the color does. What if we did, you know, raw umber and white? So maybe practice then putting in white with some of these colors. Well, what if we did uh, phthalo green burnt sienna and white? So I go back to my phthalo green burnt sienna. It gets that really nice tart color. Maybe I want to lighten it up. So then I mix a little bit of white with it and see what happens. You may need a color like that if you're doing like a landscape with a lot of different greens. Because if you've already kind of played around with mixing these colors beforehand and kind of make this little like diagram that I have and keep it open while you're actually working on your landscape painting, then it'll be easier. You won't have to like search and mix colors. Be like, oh, I know what happens when I mix phthalo green and bright red. It makes almost like a dark color. It kind of cuts out a lot of time. That's why it was it's so important that I would always have students make this big color grid. And you can go ahead and do this if you want. Um, that's totally up to you because we are kind of doing this here. Um, or you can just play around in a sketchbook page and try to do all sorts of different color combinations for um, trying to understand color theory and how they mix.